Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you where the value in Iconic Masters is. The value is in the uncommons. The uncommons are very, very good. Um, I haven't seen uncommons this good f for some time. Uh, yes, it is a $10 booster pack, but you can buy these singles and you can stock up on these because they're not going to be these prices for very long. I'm assuming that we lose about 50% of value because these are pre-order prices and pre-order prices are not going to hold once there's more supply. But it's nonetheless interesting to look at it. Dragon Tempest was a card people were speculating on heavily for the new Dragon deck. Well, it got a reprint and it is uncommon. So whatever speculation or whoever's making that speculation got hosed to oblivion. And that is not the only card on this list, which has been changed from rare to uncommon and therefore making it extremely valuable as a future spec, but terrible as a past spec. Bobble was a $40 card, same artwork. I don't see why this card would be, I don't see why the original Bobble would be that much more expensive if this is $10. I'm predicting it goes down a bit. When I mean a bit, I mean like to $5. Then it would be time to pick these up. They are extremely flexible. It has all the hallmarks of a very strong card. I don't know what makes this iconic other than it's expensive. Like you could have named this set expensive reprints and it would pretty much be the same <laughs> cards in the set. So Bobble is very, very good. Um, it is good because it's an artifact, it costs zero and it filters. So you might ask, why is a fetch line so much more expensive than, let's say, a mountain? It's tangentially better. This card is tangentially better. Now, it does have some other mechanics, like if we had another delve, then this would be very good. It, it feeds into Tomogorf as an artifact. All right, next card, we are going to look at Dynamo. I remember this card from long time ago and I'm surprised it didn't get reprint until now. It is an artifact that produces free colorless mana. It belongs in pretty much every single EDH deck. You accelerate so fast, right? So ring into something else, so ring into mana crypt, into this, into more mana rocks of some type, just is absurd. The very good card, very, very good. So I'm I'm happy to see a reprint and I don't think its price is gonna hold at five, it's probably hit $3 and then it should go up. These uncommons are fantastic. They're fantastic because there's so much value in the rares that these will be pushed down a ton. So the rares, I'm expecting a drop, but for the uncommons, the, some of them are already have experienced a steep drop, like the bobble from 40 to 10. I'm expecting an even steeper drop though for these cards because they are on commons and there will be foil versions of them as well. So that's interesting. Mind crank. It's like they knew what cards were going up and then they reprinted all of them. And they used the same artwork because they saved them money and time. You literally could call this expensive reprint masters and they would sell the same way minecrank is a very cool card i like it a ton it's good for mill decks uh, so whenever an opponent loses life that player puts that main card from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard and it's just overall a very fun card. Fun card in EDH, it's an artifact artifact cards are very strong because they can be played in any deck they are also reprinted in Glimpse. So Mill and Limited is viable. It is a viable strategy. If you can get two Glimpses, then you pretty much win the game. They draw seven, they're down to 33. They draw another one, they're down to uh, 32. And then you Glimpse them twice. <laughs> it's over. And last, well, not last, but very good, is Sword to Plowshares, which has been reprinted so many times that everyone should have multiple playsets of this very strong card. 
Wow, this card was, is still one of the best pieces of removal in Magic's history. In the history of Magic, I can't think of a better piece of removal I would rather have than this one. Maybe Lightning Bolt. You can argue Lightning Bolt. Well, this card hits very big creatures. It's interesting to see it reprinted again. I don't know how many more times they can honestly reprint. Like, it just seems like this card is in, like, every set. <laughs> Uh, it's a, either Path or it's um, Path to Exile or it's Swords to Plowshare. One of the two cards are in every single Master Set slash Conspiracy Set slash whatever. Promo. I don't... This card is a little more tricky, but it's kind of like Lightning Bolt to me. It will always have value no matter how many times it's reprinted. Here's a card some people speculated on and it is time, it is time for me to buy into this card. I have loved this card as much as I love love Falia, but it's always been four to five dollars. It's always been too expensive for me. It's been kind of janky and not like it's not the best. I'm just going point blank say it's not the best card ever. It's not a Falia in terms of power level, in terms of playability, but I love it because of the artwork. I love it because it's a red drop. It reminds me a lot of Jackal Pup. Jackal Pup is a card I grew up with, and I just loved it. Oh, of course, ja Jackal Pup is nothing compared to today's creatures, but back in the day, a 2-1 for one red with a slight downside, it was so good. So I, I look forward to collecting her in foil. I call her Taylor Swift or T-Swift. I, uh, I look forward to getting altars of her. And this is probably a card I am most excited in this set to buy into. I will be buying lots of her. And it's okay, I, the price won't move because there will be so much supply of this uncommon that it will be unreal. In fact, actually, I would probably buy this version over the con version. I heard that the quality is better. Uh, Windfall, I think the last time I saw this was it was reprinted in a commander deck, but originally it was in Urza Saga. This is not, this is a very good card, plus it's different artwork. Being that it's different artwork, it might, mm, I would say this artwork is a little bit better. It might constitute a premium, especially in foil compared to the original Windfall. There is so much value, there's not, okay, let me say, there's so much value in the rares, but there's so much potential value in the uncommons. And there's no better uncommon than I can think of the next card in terms of what it could be 10 years from now. Yes, I know a lot of you saying, hmm, Magic Arena will be probably the dominant way people play. Maybe we don't even have game shops 10 years from now. But should we play Magic the same way we play right now, 5 or 10 years later, the next card is just going to be a home run. Because what's going to happen is they're going to reprint Exquisite Blood, which is a combo. And after they reprint Exquisite Blood, this card will spike up in price because this will be the least in demand. Exquisite Blood is incredibly expensive, but before, when it was in Standard, it was Sanguine Blood that was expensive. You could buy as many Exquisite Bloods as you wanted for like a few dollars because it was in Standard and no one was playing it. Sanguine Blood, this is a very, very good speculation. Uh, I don't think it's going to hold $2 in price. I think it's going to drop to $1. But you buy this at $1 or $1.25 and you hold it for 5 years, there's no way this is not a $5 to $10 card sometime during those 5 years. It's an uncommon. Wow. Just insane, right? Absolutely insane. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.